Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and we're going through the rankings show this week. We're back with the rankings, and there's a lot of changes that have happened both inside the top 10 and outside the top 10 now that the US Open is finished with new champions. Let's go have a look at the past results. So the results from last week, only two tournaments on last week, two of the biggest ones, of course, with the US Open. Let's go check it out. So the US Open on the women's side is concluded, of course, and Raducanu defeating Fernandez 6-4, 6-3. Big shock there. I don't think anyone expected either of those players to be in the final, and they've got rewarded with their rankings. And of course, Daniel Medvedev, he won the men's tournament and defeated Novak Djokovic in the final 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. 6-4. Again, another result that a lot of people didn't think was possible, especially against Djokovic. So having a look at the top 10 for the women, we still have Ash Barty as the world number one, and Sabalenka, who made the semifinals of the US Open. She stays at number two. But last year's champion, Naomi Osaka, has dropped down two spots after failing to defend the points that she won last year, meaning that Pliskova and Svetolina, who both made the quarterfinals of the US Open last week, have gone up two spots to number three and four. Sophia Kennan, who didn't compete in New York, she stays at number six. But Bianca Andreescu, the winner of the US Open from two years ago, lost all her points and has gone down 13 spots, falling out of the top 10 for the first time in a couple of years, allowing Krejcikova to go up two spots and take that number seven position. Sviontek, she stays at number eight. And due to Andreescu falling out, Muguruza goes up one spot to number nine, and Kvitova goes up one spot rounding out the top 10. Having a look at the WTA finals race, the race to Shenzhen, and over the next couple of weeks, players will start qualifying for that end of year championship. Ash Barty, she stays at number one. But Kredrikova, she goes down one spot, even though she made the quarterfinals of the US Open, she goes down one spot, and Sabalenka regains that number two spot after getting to the semifinals in New York last week. Pushkova stays at number four. Sviontek at number five. But we have a new number six with Maria Zakari going up seven spots after making the semifinals in New York last week. She goes up to number six, pushing down Osaka to number seven, Muguruza to number eight, and Jabor to number nine. And Pagula falls out of the top ten, going down five spots thanks to a lot of players having good results and overtaking her in the rankings, meaning that Pavlachenkova gets back in at number ten. Having a look at the couple of players that have gone up in the rankings, and of course we've got to talk about the two finalists in New York rocketed up the rankings. Raducanu, she of course won the whole tournament. She's gone up 127 spots to number 23 in the world, which is obviously a career high for her. And Fernandez, she's gone up 45 spots to number 28 in the world, and that is also a career high for her. So both players getting to the final of the US Open and getting rewarded. Going to the players that have dropped down in the rankings, and it was the players that played well last year at the US Open. Azarenka made the final of New York last year. She's gone down 13 spots after failing to defend those points at number 32 now. And Serena Williams, after not competing in New York, she loses all her points from the semifinals last year, going down 19 spots to number 41 in the world, which means that if she stays at that ranking, she will be unseated at the Australian Open. So very dangerous for Serena if she goes into the new season without a seed in especially the Australian Open. Having a look at the rankings for the men now, the top 10 for the men, and not too many changes up the top with Novak Djokovic staying at number one. US Open champion Daniel Medvedev at number two. Sitsi Pass at three. Zverev stays at number four. But we have some changes in the middle with Rafa going down one spot after losing all the points he gained in New York from two years ago. He goes down one spot, being replaced by Rublev, who goes up two spots to number five. Dominic Team also losing all his points from last year goes down two spots to number eight. And Berrettini goes up a spot after having a really good tournament last week, getting to the quarterfinals. He goes up to number seven. Roger Federer, he stays where he is at number nine. But Denis Shapovalov, he drops down two spots out of the top 10 for the first time in a couple of weeks, being replaced by Kasper Rudd, who is into the top 10 for the first time in his career. So another career high ranking for a next gen player. Having a look at the race to Turin, the race to the ATP finals, Novak Djokovic stays at number one, already qualified, of course, for the ATP finals. But Daniel Medvedev, he takes the final. Sidney Pass's second spot after winning in New York, with Sidney Pass going down to number three. But despite this, both players have qualified officially for the ATP final. So Djokovic, Medvedev, Sidney Pass, they're all going to be featuring in Turin. Zverev is at number four, but he is very close to qualifying himself for the ATP finals. Rublev at number five, Berrettini at six, Rud at seven, Hercatch at eight. We have a new number nine with Felix Auger-Aliassime going up five spots into that number nine position after making the semifinals of the US Open, pushing down Sinner to number 10, and Karatsev 
falls out of the top 10 for the race to Turin. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the world rankings this weekend, Oje Aliassim, he's done well to get into the top 10 for the ATP finals, but he's also been rewarded with a career high ranking of number 11, which is four spots higher than it was before the US Open. And Alcarez, after making the quarterfinals of the US Open, he's gone up 17 spots to a career high ranking number 38 in the world, which means that coming to the Australian Open, he could be seeded at that tournament, which will definitely help him go a long way. Players that have gone down in the rankings, Dan Vavrinka. He's gone down 16 spots to number 49 in the world after not playing for a long time, still recovering from injury. And Nick Kyrgios, he's gone down nine spots to number 95, which puts him in big danger of not actually being able to qualify for the Australian Open main draw. He's gonna have to either get a wild card or maybe play the qualifiers if he does fall out of the top 100 in the next couple of weeks. So there it is, the rankings for this week, and there's a big changes. Big changes, not only in the top 10, but outside the top 10, and it's awesome to see that we're starting to see the WTA ATP Finals starting to take shape, starting to, hopefully with the WTA Finals being played, starting to take shape with some of those really exciting new players. Radu Kanyu, she's not too far out of the top 10 for that race to the Shenzhen, and also Fernandez. So who knows? Who knows how it's gonna play out in the next couple of weeks? Of course, we've got Indian Wells coming up in about a month's time, but let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most shocked about maybe going up in the rankings or maybe going down in the rankings? I know Serena Williams being outside of the top 40, uh, and we don't know if she's gonna come back and play in the next couple of weeks. She might not be playing for the rest of the year, She's a bit of a shock for me. She might be unseated when we go to Australia in January next year. So with the major tournaments done for the year, players that did well at the US Open got rewarded in the rankings.